In this video, we will discuss how to perform a static equilibrium analysis. So the first thing is, what is the static equilibrium? Now, a lot of times, uh, various engineering structures which are not moving much can be assumed to be in a static equilibrium. So the static equilibrium condition says that some of the forces acting on any particle or an object is equal to zero, and some of the moment about any point is equal to zero as well. And these two conditions define the static equilibrium condition. So all we have to do is basically create our free body diagram and then right sigma f equal to zero and then right sigma m equal to zero by taking the moment about any one of the points. And you can take moment about any point. Sometimes you'll be able to take moment about multiple points and generate enough equations to solve for the unknown. So the procedure for uh, solving problems using static equilibrium analysis is to first draw coordinate system. Second is to draw free body diagram and if you have more than one free body diagrams to draw then you draw those as well. Third is to apply the equilibrium condition. Okay and after that you should count the unknowns. So count the unknowns and see if you have enough equations. If so, then you solve for them. Okay, that's the procedure for doing the static equilibrium analysis. So, so let's do a few examples. So example one. So we have a sign and the sign is hanging via two cables okay so here's one cable and let's say this is making an angle of i don't know it's called a 30 degree this is making an angle of 45 degree from vertical and we know some weight of this sign all right so we have this sign that's hanging via two cables okay these are the two cables and we want to find out what is the tension in these two cables. So let's say this is cable one, this is cable two over here. So our pr procedure would be to first draw the coordinate system. So let's say this is X, this is Y. The second thing is to draw the free body diagram. In this case, it will be the free body diagram of the sign. So I'll draw the sign separately. So I'll first say the free body diagram of the sign. I have my sign over here. Okay, so the weight, right? And then I have tension. So that's T1 and that's T2 for you, right? And remember, the cables are in tension, the ropes are in tension. So this is how the forces should be shown. If you draw the free body of the cable one or the rope one alone, this is one, it is in tension T1 that way and tension T1 that way. And from Newton's third law, this should be T1 here and that should be T2. So this is 45 and this is 30. Okay, so that completes the free body diagram for you. I can also draw a system once more or lay down top of it, right? Now, the third thing is, assuming that this is an equilibrium, I can do sigma f equal to zero, and I can also do sigma l equal to zero, okay? So sigma f, what are the forces? We have T1 cosine 30, that's towards negative i hat, so that's minus, plus T2 uh, sine 45, okay? Uh, actually, this is not this is not cosine 30. This is sine 30, right? That's sine 30. So T1 sine 30 plus T2 sine 45, and that's along I hat plus J hat addition is T1 cosine 30 plus T2 cosine 45, and we also have weight, so that's minus W J hat equal to zero. And remember, this is a zero vector, which can also be written as zero I hat. Plus zero j hat because what we're going to do is we are going to collect all the i hat terms on the left hand side and j hat and compare them with the right side right so we get we have minus t1 by 2 with the sine 30 is one half plus t2 by root 2 equal to zero okay that's the i hat term and then we have t1 cosine 30 is root 3 by 2 plus t2 over root 2 minus w equal to zero that's equation one that's equation two so we have two equations and how many knowns we have? We have T1 and T2. Those are the two unknowns. So we can solve for both of them.
Let's do another example which involves maybe a different kind of joint. So let's say I have a wall and I have a hinge joint and I have a beam attached to it, okay? And I want to attach, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say a, a flower vase, okay? I want to attach a flower vase to it. Of course, this alone is not going to work because a, a pin joint or a hinge joint is not going to restrain the rotation, right? So which means this is going to rotate in the downward direction. To compensate for that, I'm going to attach, let's say, a cable like this. Okay, you know, cable has certain length. Let's say this is making an angle of 45 from horizontal. And we know what this weight over here is. Okay, so now the question is, let's say, what is the tension in the cable? Uh, and what are the reaction forces at point O at the pin joint O? Okay, and we also know all these lengths. So that length L is known completely to us. All right, so based on this, we can draw free body diagrams. In this case, we'll draw the free body diagram of the beam. Okay, so we'll focus on the beam. So let's pick the free body diagram of the beam. Okay, let me draw my quantum system, X and Y. So I draw the beam all by itself. And then I have the weight, W. I have the this point O, that I have the reaction OX, I have the reaction OY, uh, and then I have, this is let's say at the midpoint, so this is at L by 2, all right? So at midpoint, I have the tension, and that's at 45 degree, okay? Now, how would things change if, let's say, this joint over here, this joint over here was not a, a hinge joint, but was actually a cantilever joint? If that was the case, then I would also have a moment acting that way, right? But that's not the case here because we don't have uh, a, a cantilever joint. Okay, so now once we have this, we can do analysis. Sigma F equal to zero, sigma M equal to zero. So sigma M F equal to zero, let's first do that. Let's do this first. So I have OX uh, and then minus T cosine 45. Those are the I direction forces plus y plus t sine 45 minus w j hat equal to 0 i hat plus 0 j hat so notice that this is 0 vector it's not actually 0 0 vector is different from 0 right so 0 vector is not same thing as 0 this is a scalar quantity this is a vector quantity 0 vector is written as 0 i hat plus 0 j hat and if you had a k component then it will be 0 k hat too okay Otherwise, you can compare vectors with the scalars. I'll be comparing apples with oranges. Okay, so now we have this. So we can write OX equal to T over root 2 and OY plus T over root 2 minus W equal to 0. Right? So now how many equations we got so far? 1 and 2. How many unknowns we have? We have OX, we have T, and we have OY. So we have three unknowns and we have only two equations, so which means that we need one more equation to be able to solve this problem. So how are we going to do it? Well, we have not used the moment equation yet. So we can take moment about a point, right? Now we can take moment about point O, we can take moment about point, let's say this point is G, we can take moment about this point, let's call this P. But most of the cases, uh, taking moment about a certain point can actually help you solve the problem much more quickly. Okay, so in this case, if we take moment about point O, we know that the, there will be no contribution from the OS and OY because OS and OY are actually passing through the point O, right? Which means there will be no moment about the point O. That's the same thing as pushing at the hinges and expecting the door to open, right? So there will be no contribution from OX and OY, which means that in that equation, we will only have contribution of the moment from the tension T, okay? So let's do that. So we'll take sigma M about O equal to zero, right? So no contribution from OX and OY. What is the contribution from W? That will be W times L. Now, what is the direction of that? Well, we can see in this case that would be clockwise. So that will be minus W times L plus. Now we have the T over here. Okay, so now how do we do this? So one way to do this would be to find the perpendicular distance from, you know, O to T and then multiply T with that. And we could do that. That's not a big, big deal over here. So if we do that, then we can find out this is L by 2. This is 45. So this would be equal to over here would be L by 2. Uh, sine 45, right? So that will be L by 2 sine 45. So T times L by 2 sine 45. And that will be in the clockwise direction, the moment, so that will be positive quantity over here. And that is equal to 0. Okay? 
So this would give us uh, what L cancels. So we get T over 2 root 2 equal to W or in other words T equal to W times 2 root 2. So that's your third equation. So now you have three equations. You have three unknowns. You can solve for them. Now over here we found the moment by using the perpendicular distance method. Now remember we've talked about competent method as well, right? So one of the other ways you could solve this problem is by resolving the T along X and Y direction. Okay, so if you do that, what happens? So here is my, you know, beam O and P and here's my tension going this way at 45 degree. If I resolve it along X and Y direction, I'll get a component which is T cosine 45 and I'll get a component T sine 45 like this, okay? Now you can see that there will be no contribution from T cosine 45 because this is going through O, but there will be a contribution from T sine 45, which will be T sine 45 times this is L by 2. And you can see it's same as what you had before here, right? T sine 45 times L by 2 is same as what is written inside this uh, balloon over here.